Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Illinois 6th Congressional District Democrats Town Hall. My name is Patrick Watson, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the Illinois 6th Congressional District Democrats. We are so happy to have you all here for the town hall. We're going to uh, hear from a number of youth today who are elected officials, who are party leaders, and we're going to hear from one who is running for office, Hadia. We're very happy to have you all as a panel. Uh, again, my name is Patrick Watson. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Illinois 6th Congressional District Democrats. I'm also the state central committeeman for the Illinois 6th Congressional District. I got started initially with politics around President Obama's first election, and part of my role was engaging youth all across uh, Florida and Northern Florida. I was a campus organizer for the campaign. So youth organizing is at my roots and it's part of what I did. We were able to get a lot of people organized on campus. We were able to organize a lot of people all throughout Florida for voter registration and other efforts. And from that point, I've been involved with uh, politics in various roles, campaign manager on various targeted races from congressional races to presidential races and other races as campaign manager, field director and other uh, various roles. And in those specific roles, youth organizing was always a strong component. Within my programs, I always incorporated young people who were some of our best organizers in doing that outreach and helped us to win a number of races. So we're going to hear today from our fantastic panel just on how we can engage young people, which is a very crucial and critical demographic to get out the vote and also start to grow our bench. It's very important that we engage young people and that we are respectful of their points of view and their style of organizing and that we start to get them into some of the lower level offices. So we're gonna hear about some of the offices in 2021 as well and how we can get young people plugged into those various offices so that we have a strong deep bench within the Democratic Party. Next, I'm gonna hand it over to Nancy Shepherdson, who's the co-chair of the 6th Congressional, the other co-chair of the 6th Congressional District Democrats. Nancy. All right, hi, I'm Nancy Shepherdson. And I just wanted to share with you something that happened just today when I was talking to a person who's very involved in democratic politics. And she said, and I agreed, wouldn't we be so much far ahead if she and I had started in politics at your age? Um, you can just win the world if you start now and become professional and understand how politics works. So I am really happy that our panelists have come to share that information with you. And I hope that you really do get involved and um, help us win back our world. Thank you. All right, now it is my pleasure to introduce you all to our moderator for today. Her name is Gretchen Coleman. She is the chair of Ballot Z. She's also one of our steering committee members on the Illinois 6th Congressional District Democrats. I met Gretchen a number of years ago when I was working for an initiative uh, here within the 6th Congressional District to bring groups together and to unseat Roscom. Gretchen came into one of the canvases that I have put together with her mother. Uh, we, were, we were canvassing that day and we had what we called an organizing fellowship program. And Gretchen mentioned that she was interested. She was, I believe, a sophomore in high school at that point. Uh, Gretchen did fantastic within the program. She was one of our lead fellows in that program. Gretchen went on to become a field uh, director within my campaign for Central Committee. She was very helpful in organizing volunteers and running phone banks for my campaign. And in part due to her, I was able to win that race for Central Committee. So I want to thank you for that, Gretchen, and uh, I'd like to hear from Gretchen now. Great. Yeah, thank you all for having me. I'm very excited to be here um, because this is such an important opportunity opportunity to discuss why youth engagement is going to be so important for the November election. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, um, Generation Z, uh, which is loosely defined as voters who are about like 18 to 23, um, and millennials who are defined as about like age 25 to 40, are going to make up nearly 40% of the American electorate in the 2020 election, which means that these two generations are going to make up nearly four in 10 eligible voters. So we have before us with all of these um, young voters, a really powerful opportunity to affect change in this country and make a difference. 
Um, but this voting block is powerful if and only if people actually show up. Um, and I know that our generations really do care about the future that we're heading into. We're concerned about the, way, the, direct, the, the direction that the country is heading. Um, but there is some kind, sometimes a disconnect at the ballot box and in other places within political activism where these young voters get kind of lost in the process um, and their voices are not being heard in the political process. And we're here today to talk about why that is. Um, so I'm really excited to have these incredible panelists here with us. I'm going to briefly introduce each of them and then give them an opportunity to discuss um, more about themselves and answer some questions later on. Um, so first up, we have um, Hadia Assel, who is from Glen Ellen. Um, she is the former president of the College Democrats of Illinois. Um, she's a, she was a Milton Township precinct committee person. She has worked for several local politicians. Um, and right now she is running for the DuPage County Board which is awesome. She ran in 2018, did a phenomenal job and brought in a ton of young um, people into her campaign, really inspired by all of her work. Um, she's currently in, um, endorsed by Run For Something, which is a national organization that encourages young people to um, run for office. And I'm really excited to hear about all of her experience. So welcome, Hadia. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, and thank you, Gretchen, for opening and um, Patrick for organizing this. Um, this is District Den for having this um, youth-based town hall. I think um, Gretchen, you did a great job in highlighting exactly why it's important to make sure the young people are aware of how voting can be a tool in their toolbox uh, when it comes to affecting change and the issues that are affecting them every single day. And I think when it comes to local politics and down ballot races this November, we're seeing just how quickly um, those local electeds can have an impact on issues that are most urgent. Um, two things that come to mind right now are you know, the pandemic and also policing. And you know, in DuPage County, we've been having protests, we've been having rallies um, with young activists who are organizing to push for reforms, to hold elected accountable, to hold candidates accountable to promises they want them to follow through with, hopefully once elected in November. And so I think that when it comes to highlighting the importance that down ballot races can have in actually affecting the day-to-day -day lives of young people and working to actually um, create real change is something that we're able to do. And I hope we're able to let people know of that possibility and let them know that there is still an avenue um, that's available for them when it comes to the electoral system at least. So, yeah. Thank you, Hadia. Um, I also like to introduce um, Kevin Morrison, who's from Elk Grove Village. Um, he is a Cook County Commissioner. Um, he is the youngest um, Cook County Commissioner in history, um, the first Democrat to represent his district, um, the first uh, openly LGBTQ commissioner, um, doing really incredible work. I know has done a lot with digital organizing and reaching young voters. Um, so thank you, Kevin, for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you uh, uh, to Patrick, uh, all, all the folks who are making uh, the outreach of the 6th Congressional District all that more strong. And, um, you know, I just want to say, when it came to me running for office, had I not been involved uh, volunteering on campaigns, I would never have met the mentor that helped me actually make that decision to run in the first place. Uh, when I was elected at 28 years old, I became the youngest county commissioner ever elected in Cook County history. Uh, that's something I sought out to do. I was, uh, I was more so targeting the individual who sat in that seat, who is the current chairman of the Illinois Republican Party, a big backer of Donald Trump and someone who was not representing the Northwest suburbs well at all. Um, and so when, when it came to even deciding to run, um, I, I was speaking with a state representative who was the first campaign I ever worked on when I was in college. And he told me, you know what, Kevin, because uh, I, I was afraid. I, I go, you know, who's going to pay attention to a 27 year old knocking on doors? Uh, who's going to take me seriously? And he goes, you know what, you're smart. You uh, have great ideas. And you know what, I know one for sure way that you will not win, and that's if you do not run. And it was through conversations like that and the support I had from my network that even gave me the boost I needed to move forward. But to be honest, I, I didn't get involved in uh, political work until I was a uh, freshman in college. Uh, I was 19 years old, the first time I started getting involved in campaigns and internships, volunteer work. And I, no one ever told me I could have been involved prior to that. Had I known that you didn't have to be 18 to volunteer for campaigns, I would have been doing this throughout high school or even earlier. 
you know, I didn't have a lot of politically active uh, individuals in my family or in my immediate network. So no one told me that I could actually step up and get out there and get involved. And that's why it's so incredibly important that uh, as we're thinking about uh, youth outreach, uh, talking to people who are in high school, uh, who are maybe not eligible to vote yet, but they might already be passionate uh, about politics. I became passionate about politics when I was 10 years old, watching the Bush v. Gore election. And so had someone out, reached out to me as a youth, I would have been involved for almost an, an entire another decade. And so right now we have the opportunity not only to bring a new generation of individuals to the polls, uh, but hopefully uh, give them some of uh, the information they need so that they hopefully could run for office one day, especially when it comes to uh, people of color. We have uh, in the Northwest suburbs, almost every trustee uh, and village board are almost completely white in the Northwest suburb that we have a incredibly diverse population. We need to make sure that we are finding folks who are passionate about government, who want to represent their communities and help them take those steps, uh, not only to run for office, but uh, support candidates uh, who share their message. And um, no, it's an exciting moment. We need to make sure Joe Biden wins. Uh, and so I look forward to helping uh, uh, re-elect Sean Kasten, but Democrats up and down the ballot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. And for any young person out watching, um, we definitely want to get you involved. So please reach out to us. And um, like Kevin said, we'd like to get you involved as soon as you'd like. So we'll have more information about that later as well. Um, so next, I'd like to introduce Nate Sipple, who is from Aurora. He is the um, current Naperville Township Clerk and the DuPage County Democrats Executive Director. Um, for J.B. Pritzker's campaign, he was the political director for the Western Suburbs, so has a lot of experience um, in politics, community outreach, um, also legal experience. He worked at the Federal Judicial Center in Washington, D.C., so is bringing us a great perspective with all of his work. So welcome, Nate. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me, Gretchen, and um, thank you to Illinois 6th Congressional Democrats and Patrick. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I, um, I got started. Um, I was a campaign manager for my uh, state representative, Stephanie Kifflett. And then from there, I went on to work on a few municipal races and do some political consulting. And um, as Gretchen mentioned, I worked on Governor Pritzker's campaign um, as a political director for DuPage County. Um, as far as my background, um, in 2017, I lived in Naperville Township where we had literally zero Democratic representatives in the township level. And I ran on a slate with other Democrats and we had never won a seat in history. And then in 2017, we became, we won six of eight seats in that township. And it became, you know, it became countywide news. And um, I like to say it was kind of the blue ripple before the blue wave happened in 2018. So uh, we were very, um, we we're very fortunate in our efforts there. And I hope we can have a great discussion today about you know, engaging young people beyond just registering, beyond just voting, which is very important, but how do we engage with our elected officials to make positive change and how do we stay involved, you know, in the off cycle. So thank you for having me. Great. Thanks so much for being here. Um, so next I'd like to introduce um, Prevail Banga, um, who is from Lyle. Um, she is an um, incoming junior at the University of Illinois at Chicago, majoring in criminology, law and justice, and minoring in both political science and African American studies on the pre-law track. So very busy. Um, she is the current legislative aide for state rep um, Ann Stava Murray. And she is involved with youth engagement on a variety of fronts. Um, so she recently organized a fundraiser um, for a youth-led grassroots organization called Good Kids Mad City, and which brought in over $5,000 for this excellent cause, and also recently organized um, the Say Their Names Rally in Downers Grove, which brought out an estimated um, four to 5,000 people. So welcome, Prevail, and we're glad to have you here. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much, um, Gretchen, for reaching out. Um, I'm just, I'm extremely, you know, glad and excited to be here. Um, I think something that I wanted to say just about uh, youth in general, I may be the youngest person here, I'm 20, and there's this stigma around being young um, and being, you know, into politics and things like that. And I really don't understand why, because young people are truly the future. Um, and I'm really, really excited to hear some of the questions, but I think that in terms of elected officials, um, there's always been this disconnect. And I've been someone who's been, um, community organizing since high school. And to me, I think it's really, really important to make sure that elected officials are um, also, you know, at protests, being open about their opinions on 
policing, um, racial tensions, COVID-19. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited to be here and excited to share my perspective on some of the questions. Thanks so much. And we're very excited for your perspective as well. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to introduce um, Tom Maylard, who is from Mundelein. Um, he is the co-founder and president of the Lake County Young Dems, so very excited to hear about that organization. Um, and is the youngest of the uh, Democratic State Central Committee people. Um, he's in the 10th Congressional District and is also the National Committeeman for the Young Democrats of Illinois. So welcome, Tom. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you, Illinois 6th Congressional District Democrats, uh, for inviting somebody from the 10th Congressional in. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use the excuse I'm here on behalf of the Lake County Dems or the, uh, or the Young Dems of Illinois. So really appreciate um, putting this event on. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Thank you, Nancy. And certainly thank you, Gretchen, and obviously the fellow uh, panelists. Um, you know, Kevin kind of really, you know, Commissioner Morrison really hit on something that's really um, a, a a fascinating part of my narrative and where he and I probably got in two different paths because of the impact of being uh, involved in different times in our life. I, unlike a lot of people, was raised around the Democratic Party. Um, my, my parents were randomly reached out because they were consistent Democratic primary voters many, many years ago, probably 20, 25 years ago. And the Democratic Party in Lake County at the time was not very prominent. We didn't have a lot of, if any, um, you know, uh, Democratic representatives and, hey, we need some people from your area. And so they tried, they recruited my mom. Um, over the years, you know, she was working with, you know, Nancy Shepherdson, Lauren Beth Dash, uh, you know, a number of leaders in Lake County. And they kind of indoctrinated me. I got to learn about it growing up. And so I was involved in parades and I would go door to door doing, you know, um, you know, blitzing doors and, and doing lit drop. And then it was, you know, hey, there's a good elected official that I really think you could learn something from. Really, really smart guy. You should intern for him. And so next thing you know, I'm 17 and I'm interning for a state senator and I'm, you know, I'm managing 40, 40 workers and on a daily basis. And, and so you, I, I had an ability to naturally progress through working on campaigns and, staying in active year after year. And so then working over the years with people like Patrick and, and other phenomenal young people, the thing that was still apparently clear was that if you weren't involved for many, many years, it was going to be very difficult to get involved and get connected the right way. And so um, finding myself in this position now as the youngest central committee person at 31, uh, taking that uh, title from Patrick, so to speak, it's challenging, right? Because how do we get people that are under the age of 31 to have true ownership of the message and the future of the Democratic Party when they don't have a seat? And so I think that that is obviously the goal of many of our leaders here on this panel, uh, the Young Dems of Illinois. I'm going to plug that throughout the night. Please sign up. There are many local chapters. Uh, the Lake County one, we just announced that this is brand new. We have many Democratic representatives, but we didn't have a Young Dems uh, group until this week. We just debuted that. Um, we need to uh, roll some out in, in our other areas. So uh, definitely look forward to uh, teaming up with a lot of the people on this call and a lot of you listening at home. Okay, thanks so much. Um, and yeah, congratulations on the new chapter starting. That's really exciting. Um, so I'd like to start ask, by asking kind of about your experience with youth engagement um, throughout your campaigns and other work in the community. Um, and I would love to know like kind of how your perception of youth involvement in the political process has changed as you've gotten more involved. Um, so let's start with Kevin, just going um, from the top of my screen. Um, you could talk a little bit about your experience. No, of course. And so, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the first campaign I volunteered for um, was as soon as I got into college, I interned with some older men, uh, but it was really when I, after that opportunity, started uh, volunteering on the state rep campaign for the 2012 election season um, that really not only like taught me on what it is to be an organizer, how to do proper outreach, how to door knock, make phone calls. Uh, I, I fell in love with the whole process. And so um, I, it, it progressed over time, but you know, I would say that my most uh, active role dealing with youth was uh, my time as an organizer and as a regional organizing director when I spent two years working on the Hillary Clinton campaign. Um, 
you know, from my earliest time as uh, an organizer, I was able to bring on uh, uh, young individuals, college uh, uh, individuals to come uh, and be fellows on the campaign and, you know, training them and teaching them how to organize themselves was something that was really fulfilling for me and being able to pass on my knowledge to uh, the next generation, so to speak. But um, the way that I look at it is we, we, our, our school system doesn't do a good enough job educating us on local government. It's almost non-existent in our history classes. Uh, and we need to do outreach to young voters because giving them that information of really what down the ballot actually means and what those roles are responsible for will not only give them information that they lack throughout their education process, but also make them feel more confident in actually going and having their voice heard at the ballot box. And so we got to keep on uh, doing that work. And once we're able to go and knock doors again, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. We definitely need to kind of but people know just all that's out there and um, kind of empower them to get their voices heard. Um, so yeah, going next to my right at the top of my screen, um, Nate, if you could talk about, you kind of have the, both the local government and the party experience. So I'd love to hear about your experience with youth engagement. Yeah, um, similar to what Kevin was saying, I, I met a lot of young people who were interested in politics in the same way. They were either, you know, interning for a local state rep or they were a volunteer on a campaign. And, you know, that's how I started out. So. I got to, the nice thing is immediately surround myself with other people my age who are interested in politics. And um, you really build a network from there. And from there you can invite people from your school, people from your job, people from wherever it is to kind of build on that. So that's kind of how I established my initial network of young people. Um, another thing I really like to encourage is if you, not only volunteering on a campaign or interning if you can, but um, if you can establish in your high school and your college some sort of young Democrats group within itself, um, I find those are always really helpful to engage in when it comes to finding volunteers. So if you have a college campus, I'm seeing people just start out with two or three people and then, you know, the organization will grow into 20, 30, 40 from there. So uh, I've met people really through, uh, again, volunteering both on the state and election side and then uh, just networking out from others that were interested in local politics. Awesome. Yeah, I would definitely echo the network power within the like, college, um, high school and college Democrats chapters. I'm a member of the college Dems at my school and it's been a really good experience. Um, so next, um, we'll go to Prevail. If you want to talk about your experience at the community, I know uh, just in the past couple of weeks, you've done a ton with youth engagement. So I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, so um, the way that I started basically, I believe was my sophomore year um, when I started doing, you know, community organizing. And one of the I actually did a lot of work around gun violence, um, specifically in the city of Chicago, because, um, you know, in the, in the suburbs, mass shootings are the only forms of gun violence that people really think about when reality, um, in certain neighborhoods in the city, it happens literally every day. So after the um, shooting in Parkland, Florida, where, you know, 17 students died, um, me and a group of friends got together and we decided to organize a well, first we did a walkout and um, we actually did a couple of those, um, got penalties and all, but we did it and people were aware. And the next step that we took was organizing a March for Our Lives Donners Grove, which ended up getting um, a little over 1200 people, which was you know amazing. And I think after that, that's when people started reaching out to me more and more saying, I'm really, really involved, or I, I want to get involved in terms of, you know, politics and legislation. And I think that um, with high school students, um, like Kevin said, I mean, learning about civic engagement, if you're interested in government, like you may get that. And some of our teachers do a great job, but say you don't take AP US history, then what? And then even for friends that I, that I know that took AP US history, they were like, eh, it's still pretty boring. Like, I feel like I'm not really learning what I wanna learn. It's not really adding anything to me. It's just a bunch of information. Um, and, you know, I just kept those thoughts in mind as I got older and older. And then by the end of my senior year, I got connected with um, Anne, obviously. And she actually asked me to work on her campaign. And um, she did it in a very, you know, grassroots way. And that was something that I loved to see because I felt like it wasn't the typical political mess that everyone, you know, thinks about. It was just very, organic, door to door, um, very personal. And, you know, from that point on, I've just been 
um, not only looking at it from a community organizer perspective where I'm like, you know, looking at social justice issues, I was also making sure and trying to see if there was um, legislation and policy that could be passed, which is why I picked up the minor with um, political science. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much kind of the summary of it. Um, with younger, I think with my generation especially, and I may be like moving a little ahead, but I think it's also really important for um, current elected officials and just uh, people in the community to, to encourage uh, young people to run. Because like I said, there's that stigma around being young and you're not sure if you should do it or if people will take you seriously. But honestly, there's so many brilliant minds that you know people don't even know about. Um, so yeah. Thank you. I think definitely encouraging the power of young voices um, will be but critical to getting um, the important issues passed in the future. Um, so um, next we'll go to Tom, kind of going again on my screen. Um, yeah, if you want to add your thoughts on this with youth engagement. Yeah, I, I think definitely Prevail has hit on a, a very important point, which is really, it, it's one of two things that I really wanted to stress. One is encouraging people to run. But then once we encourage them to run, it's offering the resources they need to know how to techn technically do it how to fill out your, not, your, your filing papers, how to go and, you know, whatever your thoughts are on raising funds, the, the impact of needing to, to have a PAC, to have a bank account, to be able to go through that. Those are very intimidating steps, I think, for a lot of our young people. And so even if you feel that you have a, that you have a voice and opinion that needs to be shared, you go, how, how do you go about uh, competing with essentially multi-million dollar PACs and, and I think that's where, again, have, letting young people see that there are people that are successful in running for office, that you can be a Hadia and you can, and you can keep running and keep growing your support. And, and you're not going anywhere. The time is on your side. And I think that that's something that just being able to encourage people to make those incremental improvements has always been one of those things in every campaign I've worked with, you know, recruiting and reaching out. It's been about the elected officials that have been willing to reach out to young people, to go to your colleges, to go to your high schools, to reach out to government teachers and say, do you have people that want to intern? Because I, I think we all feel pretty confident that most young people are not identifying with the, with the worldview of Donald Trump but now we need to convince them of why our view and why Joe Biden is the right pick. And so it's about getting it, it's going and reaching out to them and getting out to them. The electeds we've seen do that over the years, um, they're the ones that have had that prolonged success, I think. Yeah, thank you. That listening and that outreach to young voters is critical and I think we'll definitely end up making the difference. Um, and so um, finally for this question, we're gonna go to Hadia. Um, and with your campaign in 2018, I know you were able to reach um, tons of young voters and get lots of young volunteers on board. So I'd love to hear about your experience with that and with this campaign as well. Yeah, for sure. So when I got started, it was actually through my AP US history class. Um, I was an election judge, like a student election judge because we got paid and we got time off school um, for two whole days, right? The primary and the general. And so when I was a, um, uh, election judge in the general election in DuPage, I saw how Clinton won the 2016 race, but at the local level, we lost, um, we, we didn't like gain control of the county board. Um, that was all red, even though it had gone democratic in almost every other seat, you know, congressional, uh, we've flipped it since then. And so I began working for the county party the next summer as an intern um, on their summer canvassing project. And so I began walking across the county. I started attending county board meetings. That was the first that I had learned of the county board's existence and their role in how they dealt with issues um, at the local level. And so as I began attending these meetings, I saw how they were being run. I saw who was running those meetings. I saw who was attending. Um, I saw the lack of diversity. I saw the lack of ideological representation of Democrats that I knew lived in DuPage. And I knew that there needed to be change. And so when the Democrats in the office are talking about who could run potentially for the seat in District 4, um, I was about to turn 18 in a couple of months and I was like, would I be eligible? And they were like, yeah, but why would you wanna do it? And the answer was I wanted to start addressing the issues that I saw around me um, as a young person. I mean, I'm only 20 now um, and start addressing them at the local level almost where it seemed to be easier to reach compromises to find solutions to these common problems um, because it's less of a it's it's easier to 
gain bipartisan, like nonpartisan support for issues when it happens on a local level more often, um, rather than like gridlock at the state or federal level that we see a lot. And so I think that draw of our campaign um, spoke, like resonated with a lot of young voters. Um, I think Patrick mentioned I was a former president of the College of Democrats of Illinois. And so I had a lot of friends in college who were politically involved, who were interested in, you know, working hands on at a higher level on the campaign instead of like just as an organizer for a professional one. And so they were able to be like my core team in the 2018 race. And so we were kind of like building the plane as we were flying it um, two years ago. And so we're a little more set up now with better connections, um, more experience in 2020. And a renewed drive um, to win in November because every passing week we see a greater urgency in who is represented in our elected offices and the changes and impacts they're making and are not making. And so I think um, that sense of urgency is felt by a lot of people, especially young people, because we've been failed by a lot of the current, um, by the current status quo that we see around us. You know it's hard to have a lot of expectations when, you know, there, there is no 10 year plan anymore, right? You're, you're working to the next, the next big thing. And so I think this election can be that opportunity for us. And as I mentioned in my earlier answer, um, tying it back to issues that people care about and making sure young people know that there is an option to begin remedying those problems at a very accessible down ballot level is crucial to making sure we can boost turnout in an election that's really going to see a lot of um, unexpected um, effects likely on um, voter participation. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, vote by mail efforts, um, the efforts that we're making now at the township level, the party levels to coordinate and make sure voters are aware of their options, they're aware of the applications for ballots. Um, there's a lot of work to be done before November, but I think that we have a good um, framework set up to um, get that work done. So looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you guys all touched on some really, really important points, especially like the importance of local government, because I um, echo all of you and think that doesn't get emphasized enough in really the way that that directly affects people. And also just kind of listening to young voters and able being able to like amplify their voices um, and get that kind of manifested into office. And that's how we're going to be able to see change. And you guys are all doing just really incredible work there. So I want to commend you all for that. Um, so next, I want to talk about kind of a more specific aspect of how we can reach people, um, specifically with digital organizing. Um, so I know that um, Kevin had touched on this, that we can't go knock on doors right now. And a lot of the traditional methods that we've used to reach people and get to young voters just aren't working um, due to COVID. So we've got to kind of adapt and be creative in the way that we're able to reach these voters. Um, but fortunately, young voters spend a lot of their time online. I know I spend way too much time on social media and I'm not the only one. Um, so if um, you guys could all just kind of touch briefly on um, your thoughts on digital organizing, maybe things that have worked in the past or what you would like to try in the future to get to voters before November. Um, and again, we'll start, start at the top of my screen. So we'll start with Nate. Do you wanna talk about your experience there? Yeah, I think social media is an extremely powerful tool to organize. And with this COVID pandemic, considering we can't get together in a room in a big group like we used to, it's only gonna become more and more powerful. Um, a lot of the great activism we've seen from our young people lately has all been organized on social media. So I think it's a great tool, whether it's you know Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever you need to do. If you can start out a group and just build it from there and say, hey, we're gonna have you know, a postcard drive at seven o'clock. Maybe we have to do it virtually, but this is what we're gonna do. Or if we get back to a place of knocking doors, like, hey, let's all pair up and pick a candidate and go out and, you know, we'll post pictures of what we were doing that day. And that's, it really is a viral effect, right? It grows and it grows when people see, you know, here's 10 of my friends out volunteering for a state representative. That's something I'd be interested in doing too. So it's only gonna become more and more important considering the pandemic that we're in. Um, also, a great way to get young people engaged and excited is what we're doing right now through these Zoom webinars. Um, I know that we've organized some around like the environment and different issues like that. We've had just general Q&As with elected officials. Um, we're going to be organizing some to talk about things like police brutality and systematic racism. These are all issues that young people really care about. And when we get our elected officials um, on a screen and we pair them up with activists, it sparks a really good conversation and makes young people feel like their voice matters and that will bring them into the fold. So um, 
yeah, again, whether it's Zoom or social media, this is, it's going to be more important in this election more than it's ever been. So. Yeah, we definitely have new opportunities to do things like this that would be much harder otherwise. So there's kind of a silver lining to all of this as well. Um, next, we'll go on to Tom. Um, if you want to talk about your thoughts on digital organizing. Yeah, the, you know, and this is something that certainly Young Dems of Illinois, um, we are really spending a lot of time with, you know, so much of what our previous plans were, were happy hours and events and in person and really trying to get people to, uh, you know, just go to a fun place and identify as a Democrat, let alone do something where it's really policy dense or something, just trying to break down those barriers. But certainly, I think we still need to try to um, catch that vibe with some of these uh, virtual um, things. So certainly keeping a, an, an era of fun. And, and I think that that's just, it's a, it's a challenge, right? It's, it's about being creative and, and talking about genuine topics that uh, our young people are interested in. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a moving target. I think uh, clearly social media has to be um, a key component to any uh, modern race, whether it's local, state, federal, you know, there was a period that maybe some of us on here uh, recall where you didn't necessarily need to run a, a robust social media campaign, and, and that time is gone. So, so I think that those are certainly aspects that um, they do connect, but even, you know, I was having a conversation with uh, Patrick recently, and we were talking about the need to expand i'm 31 and hey you're you're not on instagram and, and and you're out of touch with now a new generation and so the fact is that there are moving targets that we need to continue to adapt to as the laws and rules change related to what are the policies uh with facebook social uh, twitter we need to be ready to adapt and, and so i think the biggest thing i can recommend is um try to keep an eye out uh, for other people's, you know, it's, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time, you know, there, there are good ideas that other people will do, you know, the fact that six Dems are doing this, there's no reason why young Dems are, are in the 10th congressional district, why we can't do this exact sort of engagement to young people in the 10th. And I think um, sometimes we, we outsmart ourselves by thinking that we got to do something bigger, better, grander, and, half the time it's the effort and the desire to genuinely engage that comes through more than the pretty shiny nice thing that you offer as the shtick to get someone. They help, but it's not the only thing. Yeah, definitely, and I think we can definitely, like you mentioned, learn from other people and kind of, we're all in this together to figure out these new ways. So yeah, definitely thank you for your perspective there. Um, Next, I'm going to go on to Hadia. Um, you want to talk a little bit about your experience with social media and other ways to reach people online? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've been online since, you know, I can remember. Um, and it's very di different online, like, landscape and environment than I think a lot of older people in politics are more used to navigating, especially in, during the pandemic when everything's kind of shifted online. Um, I think maybe re- focusing our voter contact efforts as well is pretty important. Um, you know, increasing like texting programs to young people, making sure we're reaching people through increased phone banking drives, um, you know, writing postcards perhaps, and then making sure that there's actually um, investment in digital organizing. I think there's a lot of lip service sometimes paid to camp, like from campaigns um, at the local level. I think most people run their social media accounts themselves, but like maybe um, at larger ones where, you know, people talk about digital investment, blah, blah, blah. And then it falls on like the comms director to kind of do all of that work themselves. And so I think when it comes to understanding and acknowledging the role that digital advertising and digital organizing will have in this particular election, um, campaigns and candidates need to make sure they are dedicated to actually providing um, their teams and their staff with the resources they need to actually um, make it an effective um, organizing strategy for the campaign. Because, you know, if you're not getting a good return on the investment you're putting into that program, it's not really worth it. But right now, that is what needs the most money. I mean, mostly it goes toward, you know, uh, the, the expenditures for in-person voter contact. And with that now kind of out of the way and accessible um, to campaigns over the next few months, um, that money should be going towards um, effective um, voter contact tools that we know work. 
like uh, Thomas said, there's no need to recreate the wheel. Uh, you know, we have programs like Hustle, we have other digital um, firms and resources that are available to use and available to candidates to use. Uh, and I think we should make full, um, uh, full use of that, so. Yeah, definitely. I know um, social media, like campaign, campaign social media looks effortless and all of these digital things look effortless, but there's so much work that goes into that. So making sure we dedicate like the time and energy needed, I think, like you mentioned, is crucial. Um, so next we'll go to Prevail, if you want to talk about um, strategies you've used in the past. Yes, sorry, I had some te technical difficulties, but I'm back now. So with digital organizing, um, especially now it's honestly essential and it's probably the best way to get the 18 to 24 age group to vote um i would just say i mean the way that i feel like our generation absorbs things is through you know infographics so seeing an instagram post that is clear it's you know this candidate um what they're for what they're against like swipe to read for more details something that's quick basically quick blurbs of information. Um, definitely invest in someone who is able to market effectively because um, as some of you said earlier, using social media platforms, especially Instagram and Twitter, I think um, people from our generation are actually moving away from Facebook a little bit more, but Instagram and Twitter definitely, um, even in terms of the presidential election, I'm getting ads and I'm like, okay, they're doing a good job. I mean, I'm getting in, I'm seeing it and I'm able to vote. So if students see it enough, um, or people in the age group of 18 to 24 see it enough, they will, you know, be attracted and go to the polls. And I think um, something else is like, like, about how I said, you know, making issues clear. So I actually talked to a couple of my friends um, before doing this, and I was like, what would it really take for you all to vote? And they are about 20 to 22, and said that they feel like a lot of officials, elected officials aren't really clear about their issues. Um, it's really hard to find, you know, exactly what they stand for and exactly what they don't. And I mean, I think it's, you know, obviously a tactic because if you say what you're for, you know that you're not gonna get the votes against. Like, let's just be honest, but it's better to be clear and open about it because some people won't vote for you if they don't know what you stand for. So it's like, I don't know, you have to decide which um, part you would prefer to choose, but just being, you know, very transparent. Yeah, and I think that social media is a really good way to communicate that transparency if you're doing it the right way and if you're kind of doing that intentionally. So you brought up some yeah, really crucial stuff there. Um, and then next we'll go to Kevin, if you want to talk about um, your digital organizing strategies and your thoughts on that too. Uh, well, I, I want to start and just comment on what Prevail said, and well, it, it's so great to see such wise uh, voices at, at the age of 20. Thank you for the work you're doing with your university, and keep it up. I want to see you run for office one day. Uh, I definitely am not afraid about uh, what my beliefs and the policies I want to see moving forward, so if anyone has any questions about what I stand for, give me a call, reach out to my, well, reach out to me on the political side. I'll be happy to speak to you about it, uh, but what I do want to say is if you have an opportunity to uh, say, get an organizing position with this presidential election, uh, a lot of my knowledge about digital organizing came from my experience working on the 2016 election. Uh, I really took all that I learned from that campaign and brought it into the race that I ultimately ran when I ran for county board. Um, and one thing that I would say works really well, uh, and oh, Unfortunately, I, I don't know any other platform but Facebook that allows you to do this in such a targeted way. But um, what I did when, um, you know, you, you start your own campaign page, but, you know, if you're only inviting your friends, well, you're not really reaching out to anyone else. And it's very difficult to get new traffic to your page, right? And so what I did is I started adding all the different progressive groups in the state of Illinois, um, you know, all the indivisible groups, the um, all the prog progressive groups, the uh, you know, the, the six times, the Mount Prospect, your local uh, uh, committee person pages and the like. And as I was out knocking doors or doing videos and you know, for folks out there who are trying to get their name out there if you're running for office or you're, you know, you're trying to uh, build a, a larger following, sharing to those pages was very helpful 
in uh, getting more likes to my campaign page. And it helped, uh, you know, you know, by doing videos of me going knocking on doors and talking about the issues I was running on and what I want to see in terms of change for Cook County, um, by doing that, it also helped give me the opportunity to not only um, share who I was and why I was running with a group of individuals who are already engaged in politics, uh, but it also helped bring new volunteers uh, to my campaign. And so I would say just share that information with all those progressive and democratic oriented pages uh, from your own personal uh, campaign page. And it really will help uh, not only expand your voice, but it's also free and it's a, a smart thing to do. Yeah, thank you for that. That digital networking is huge and I think often overlooked, but it's like such a really crucial resource too. So yeah, that's thank you for bringing that up. Um, so I think now um, we're going to open it up for audience questions. I know um, people watching the YouTube stream um, have been adding in some questions. Um, yeah, so Patrick, um, have any have we gotten any audience questions yet? There have been a few audience questions. Let me take a look at some of the audience questions. So there was a question around how old do you need to be to run for office? Does anyone answer that? 18 by the filing deadline. <laughs> so you have to be 18 to run for office, but if you're running for Congress, you have to be 25. If you're running for US Senate, you have to be 30. And if you're running for president, you have to be 35. There are certain age differences depending on your race. Some races also have a uh, element added that you have to have lived in that area for a certain amount of time. So for example, when I ran for county board, I had to live in that district for two years. So um, if you don't uh, uh, know for sure about, you know, say you know what you want to run for, reach out to your local Democratic committeeman or someone like Patrick Watson or someone like uh, Nancy and, or someone like Thomas too, I can't leave you out. They'll be helpful in getting those answers to you. You know, we don't expect people who want to run for office to know all the information about every other seat, uh, but we'll make sure to uh, get those questions answered. And there's no age limit to getting involved. So anyone can get involved at any time. And um, yeah, do that now. Reach out to us today. People often think there's an education requirement too, or an experience requirement. And there is not. You need to be a certain age, live in your district for the required amount of time, be a registered voter, and that's it. Be a citizen. It's Anybody can, and every, everybody should <laughs> think about it. There was a question on how to start a campus DEMS organization on your specific campus. And that's something that we can help you with. If you fill in the form that we've posted on the YouTube channel, we can help you to get started with starting up a, whether it's a high school uh, Democrats chapter, we can also get you in touch with Tom, who's with the Young Dems of Illinois to get a chapter started up within your specific county. Or if you're interested in starting up a college Dems or joining a college Dems chapter, we can help point you in the right direction for that as well. Yeah, Hadi, I know you have the background from um, CDIL too, if you wanna add anything with that. Yeah, of course. If you guys are, in, if anyone's interested in starting a college Dems chapter on their own campus, I encourage you to go to the College Dems of Illinois like website. We have a um, chapter interest form, then someone will get in touch with you. Someone from the new board will get in touch with you um, about chartering, about all the rules and everything. So, yep, Patrick or CDL are both good resources. We've got a question from the DuPage Dems chair, Cynthia Borbis. She asked, what do you wish the Democratic Party to understand about what motivates and attracts younger voters? Okay, I would definitely like to touch on this. Um, just because I, like I said, I was talking to friends earlier about what they would look for. And um, something that they made clear that I agree with is we want to see politicians be um, honestly just out. So like protests, for example. Um, being vocal about, like I said earlier, race relations, policing, COVID-19, um, do not leave out marginalized groups. So black and indigenous people, people of color, the LGBTQ plus community, people who may be homeless or struggling with housing. Um, it seems like a lot of times, you know, marginalized groups are left out of the conversation and 
especially uh, for my friends who, who are of color, a lot of them feel like um, certain politicians genuinely don't care about their interests. And, you know, I, I obviously understand that um, majority of the Northwest suburbs are white, but I would also love to make sure that the politicians that I choose or elect um, care about specific, you know, issues that may be um, surrounding me. Also, just being able to amplify the voices of young people. So, you know, things like this are amazing because, like I said, I just share it with my friends and that's already, you know, X amount of people that are watching and that, that can share and say, oh, Kevin Morrison was there. Thomas was there. And then they tell their friends about it. So just um, amplifying uh, young voices. Um, I think I'm trying to think of something else. I guess I would just say um, also making sure that the youth know that their, vo their vote is important. So for me, I honestly felt like elected officials didn't really care about my vote. They're like, oh, they're young. They don't vote anyways. So it makes you kind of disinterested. And I feel like if elected officials or people who are running um, come to high schools, come to college campuses, that truly, truly means so much because then it's like you feel seen, like you feel like, you know, your voice is important and um, you're interested in getting involved and you even, you know, bring other people with you. So I think those are probably the top three things that I would say. There's another question. What can young people bring to the table in the world of politics that older generations can't? Anyone want to get this? Gretchen, do you want to get this? The jadedness. <laughs> Greater sense of possibility. There, um, I think the old way of politics is kind of gone. Um, I think a lot of rules have been broken. Um, and I think um, especially young people now aren't afraid to maybe fight for bolder ideas and are more willing to push their electeds and push older people to uh, follow through on those promises and actually prioritize um, the issues that young people care about too. I mean, climate change, for example, that was one of like, uh, our campaign's biggest uh, driving factors. I know a lot of other um, local campaigns too are drawing young people to their platform based on their um, plans to fight climate change, place on their plans to, you know, combat racism in uh, local politics, on their plans to, ref um, um, you know, reassess the funding of police in local municipalities. And so those are the issues that young people care about. Those are the issues that people are willing to fight for as well. And I think that is a sense of possibility um, and boldness and courage that I think young people are bringing to the table and are bringing to the political sphere right now, so. And if I could add to that idea, I think that was really well said, but uh, especially on the point, I, you know, just anyone out there who supports seeing funding redirected towards services and helping um, affected communities actually, you know, be able uh, to move to a better place, um, you know, please reach out to every county board commissioner. We have a big policy initiative to see a redirect of funding towards services as opposed to just constantly throwing it into the criminal justice system, but instead uh, see things like more affordable housing, mental health and the like. And you know, the great thing is when I ran for office, I ran on trying to find more affordable and accessible mental health care options for all Cook County residents. And so when folks are sending me those emails, don't defund the police. Well, I can't, I'm not a mayor. Uh, the county we have, you know, uh, the ability to affect the budget of the sheriff, but uh, I definitely plan on taking some money from the sheriff's office and redirecting it because we shouldn't be treating mental illness at the county jail. That's unacceptable. Uh, so we really need to uh, think forward. And I've been working with uh, many organizations on, uh, on that front and looking at counties that have actually done a good job of expanding mental health access. Um, another thing is, especially when you want to reach out to youth and talk to them and get them interested and show that you're not just some, you know, politician who doesn't care about, you know, the younger voters because they don't vote. I mean, honestly, it, it, it's so easy to, well, mind you, not all elected officials are empathetic. So, you know, if they're not empathetic, if they're not working hard, if they're literally uh, just sitting on their seats and doing little of nothing, it's time to get someone to run against them. Um, but if they're passionate and they care, talk to them. They're happy to hear your issues and they're happy that you'll be engaged. But honestly, 
right now we need to do something around climate change. That is a perfect way to reach out to you because this is going to be our planet over the next, you know, several decades. And they're predicting that 70% of the earth could potentially be uninhabitable by 2070. I'll be 80 in 2070. Uh, a lot of people on this line will be even younger than that. And we will potentially, and likely, hopefully, if we survive COVID, still be on this planet. And we need a planet to be able to survive on. So we need to, we need fast action now. And just to add, um, like Kevin made a great point. I think something else that uh, the Gen Z, our, my generation can add is that um, we are quick on our feet. We can organize very quickly. Um, so for example, and I remember, I mean, just in terms of like organizing petitions, even going to elected officials' houses and protesting, like we're not scared, um, which is like really, really important too. And I remember, and I don't know if you all heard about this, but this was, I think about a week ago where there was, um, it happened federally where international students had to go um, back to their countries and couldn't have an education in the US. Um, not only was there a petition that was organized extremely quickly, I literally texted my state rep and I, and I was just like, is there anything that we can do in terms of protections for international students? Like just being, I don't know, being blunt and being very um, just ready to make things happen. I feel like older generations before us kind of sat on it, you know, we're kind of just like, well, you know, now may not be the time, but when is it ever the time? Like, you just have to go. If you see something wrong, I feel like you just need to jump on it. And I think our generation is perfect at that. Hadia, are there anything that you have planning up for your campaign that people can get involved with? Do you have any days of action, any phone banks or other things that people can do? Uh, yeah, so we'll, um, we're actually printing out more door hangers and stuff now. So we're doing like no contact lid drops um, in target precincts, um, you know, deliver the masks and gloves. We've been doing that for some township flyers. Um, so hopefully that'll be okay. Um, obviously, writing postcards, um, text banking, phone banking. Uh, we have a date of action, post them on our Facebook page and other social media. So if you guys want to follow us, uh, how do you for the page, all our handles. So uh, we'll be posting updates there um, and we hope to have some of your uh, help because, you know, uh, we're up against an incumbent and um, it'll be an uphill battle in a district like ours. Um, but I have hope for this November. I think people are ready for change. So thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. Great. For the rest of the panelists, are there any social media accounts that you would like to plug that you're involved with that we can put into the chat section? Um, I can. Oh, go ahead, Nate. Go ahead, Nate. Well, I was just gonna say, um, if if you wanna um subscribe to info at DuPageDemocrats.com, um, any events we're working on, especially events with youth, will be posted there. And then we also have um a Facebook page and an Instagram and a Twitter, so it's all DuPage Democrats. So uh, I I invite you to follow us there. Uh, I was personal. Instagram page. So it's PJ Bonga, B O N G A dot 17. I have um, IG lives occasionally where I talk about just systemic issues, politics, education, healthcare. And I always have different guests on there. So if one of you want to be a guest, that'd be really cool. Um, and then my Twitter is, I have like, like one, one Twitter that's like more like business and it's P B O N 1749. So um, yeah, follow me on those platforms and I post a lot of updates, which is also like my personal life. All my pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are Kevin for Cook, Kevin, the number four and then Cook. Um, and then if you just look up Kevin B. Morris and you can find my official pages as well. Certainly, I will plug uh, Young Democrats of Illinois as well as the Young Democrats of Lake County. We have both. Um, we have uh, Facebooks for both of those. We do have a Instagram. I will get that info for the uh, for Young Dems Lake County as well. I believe we have one for uh, Young Dems for Illinois as well. Sign up, uh, check out their website. Uh, if anyone from Lake County or even anyone from DuPage, certainly welcome to come on August fourth. We're going to be having our uh, inaugural launch event. Uh, we did a virtual launch, now we're going to do a Zoom. We'll have some elected official guests, uh, so it should be real nice. 
And I want to give um, just a brief plug um, for Ballot Z, which Patrick mentioned briefly. Uh, but this is an online initiative to increase turnout among Generation Z voters specifically. So it's definitely relevant to everything we're doing here. Basically, just making the process more accessible and providing more information. Um, so we're, we have a website, which is ballot-z.org, and um, all the social media, so Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, if you just search Ballot Z, you can find um, Illinois relevant um, voting information um, just to get out as many Gen Z voters as we can for November. And I think we're about out of time. Um, we're just at an hour. Um, so people, um, I just want to thank you all for coming. Um, this is, I'm coming out of this really inspired. Oh, Kevin, you have something you want to add? Just before you guys get off, I just want to tell everyone right now, I am sending some money over to Hadia Afsal. And everyone on this call, if you could at least send five bucks to Hadia, let's make sure she wins, okay? Go donate, go to her website, just look up her <laughs> name, you can find her Facebook and her. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely send that and encourage that for Hadia as well. Um, and I just want to give you guys the chance to give like just a one sentence um, quick, like something you want to say about this, about young voters, um, a call to action for anyone, just kind of anything you want to add to the conversation before we go. Um, let's start with Nate. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I'll say, well, this might be a little bit more than a sentence, but if you're a, if you're a young voter, hold your friends accountable. When I first started voting, I knew I had five or six friends in my neighborhood who would vote Democratic, but only if I made them. So I would text them and say, hey, I'm voting or I'm in your driveway and we're going right now. So I'd say if, as a young voter with a network of people who may or may not vote, hold them accountable, make sure they do it. Great, yes, thank you. Definitely hold them accountable, bug them until they vote. And that'll work. Um, Tom, we'll go on to you. Again, thank you so much to the uh, Illinois 6th Congressional District Democrats for, for putting this on. This is really uh, phenomenal. And obviously, all the fellow panelists, um, you know, thank you. Um, I, I, just leaving, uh, I want to pick something I think it's very important to plug for all of our, especially young listeners, but all of our listeners in general. Please, please, please go do the census. This is going to determine whether or not we lose representation or keep representation. This is gonna determine whether or not your schools, your communities are funded, how much federal funding you get. This is crucial. Please, please, please go fill out the census. Speaking of bothering your friends, when, when you're, you know, before you're, you know, just like you're gonna do with your voting and you're gonna bother your friends to go vote, bother your friends to go, to go and fill out the census, bother your families to fill out the census, please, please, please. Yeah, thank you. Fell out the census. Um, we'll go on to Kevin next. I would just say, yes, 100%, get your census done. We need to be counted and uh, go check out some of my videos and share them because I did a lot of census videos too. Uh, but uh, I, I would just say it is so incredibly important that we drill everyone in our networks. This election is not a done deal. We are not guaranteed to beat Donald Trump. Remember back in 2016, everyone said, not a chance Hillary's gonna win. I remember that clearly because when I was working in Ohio as a regional, what, what were we hearing all over Ohio? Oh, I don't need to waste my time voting. She's gonna win, she's gonna win. In Ohio, everyone who wants to see Donald Trump out of office needs to go and vote. Everyone who wants to see the Senate flip needs to go out and vote. If you have the ability, please donate to candidates up and down the ballot. They need your support, especially now, it's hard to raise money. If you're fortunate to still have a job and still be bringing in that salary that you had prior to COVID, please try to be helpful to those who are running for office right now uh, because everyone is hurting. Um, but just make sure that you are doing your part. No one wants to wake up on November 4th and say, I wish I could have done more. For sure, thank you. Um, next we'll go to Hadia. Um, I just want to reemphasize what I mentioned at the opening of this town hall, um, both for young people listening and for others who aren't listening, um, that this um, election is one way to make sure we affect the change we want to see in the world. And it is a tool in your toolbox. You know, there are protests, there are rallies that are happening, there are direct actions that are being held to force change on these issues. And I think that, you know, if it can take you, if you take like 10 minutes to just fill out a vote by mail ballot and drop it in the post, <laughs> post box, um, in addition to the other work that you're doing, that can be a very helpful form um, of, um, 
uh, of civic engagement as well. And so I would encourage people to make sure they reach out um, as they're saying to your friends, because, you know, especially in Illinois, we don't get a ballot mailed to us. We have to mail in an application to get a ballot and then fill that out and then mail it back in and also check to make sure it was received at whatever clerk's office you sent it to. So I think it's imperative to make sure we are um, following up with people when it comes to you know that ballot process because it is not intention it's not easy on purpose. Um, they are trying to disenfranchise young people, you know. So um, I'd also make sure we refrain from like blaming people themselves and just making sure we encourage positive um, reinforcement when it comes to these kind of actions. So you know, making sure people know what we're fighting for, um, not just what we're fighting against, is really important. Um, and making sure we are calling to people on the issues that matter to them, rather than just trying to take anyone's vote as granted is also really important. So uh, with that, thank you guys for organizing tonight's town hall. And I appreciate Greg um, moderating this and um, all the questions that were asked too. It was great. Thank you guys. Thank you. I definitely want to echo that positivity because I think that's um, so important for young voters, especially. Um, and then last but not least with our panelists, they'll go to prevail. Um, what would you like to say? So if there's anyone that is young that's watching this, and when I say young, I mean 20s, young, even younger, um, you really have the power to change the world. Just know that. I don't know if people have told you that, but it's true. We really do have the power to change the world, and that's what we're going to do. Um, elected officials, some of you watching, uh, we're watching you. Um, we pay attention to what events you're at. We pay attention to your platforms. We pay attention to what you stand for. So please be transparent because um, you can lose votes just due to not being transparent and open and standing for the right things. Okay. Um, just thank you again to all these panelists. I'm coming out of this really inspired. Um, so I'm just gonna turn this over um, to our uh, um, also wonderful hosts this evening. Um, Nancy, is there anything you wanna add um, to the conversation? Um, I just wanted to say that politics is one of the only areas where young people can really get um, asked to do a lot of important things and they can really make an impact. Um, my, one of my best volunteers, excuse me, one of my best volunteers was 15 years old and he ended up running our phone bank for a, in a certain area for a congressional campaign because he learned how to do it. He learned how to recruit people. And now he is, well, he's formerly, I think, but he became the uh, head of the North Carolina Young Democrats. And he's got a huge future ahead of him. And so all you have to do really is volunteer and say yes to what you're asked to do and then expand your role as you see fit. Um, because there's nobody there who wants to tell you no if you want to do more. And so young people as young as 15 can really be impactful in campaigns. So I would recommend that everybody, excuse me, everybody find a nearby campaign to volunteer for if you wanna get involved in politics and the sky's the limit after that. Yes, please get involved today. And I know on the YouTube stream, we have a forum so you can fill out to um, learn more about our amazing panelists and to get um, more involved. So definitely encourage you all to fill that out. Um, yes, yeah, so then last but not least, I'm going to turn it over to Patrick um, for his final words. Thank you to our panelists. Uh, this was an amazing conversation. I also want to give a shout out to our amazing summer organizing fellows who helped with the recruitment for this event. You know, lots of you that are watching got a call from them either today or over the past few weeks to attend this town hall. They're an amazing group of high school students from high schools all across the district that are really doing a lot of great work for us uh, this summer. I also wanna plug that we have a fall fellowship program that's going to be starting in August. We're going to have very flexible schedules that fit students, hours within schools, whether you're doing remote learning or you're doing learning in class. So please sign up for that. There's a form that is in the chat. We'll also put it at the end of the video once this video is completed so that you all are able to fill that in. We also have links where you can sign up for Hadia's campaign, Sean Kasten's campaign, and all of the other campaigns all across the district or with any of the local county organizations as well. So thank you again just to the amazing panel. As everyone here said, get involved, get involved, get involved. 
and you'd be surprised at what you will be able to do. And I look forward to seeing a lot of you run for office. We have elections coming up in 2021. A lot of you are concerned about accountability at the municipal level or within the police departments. Run for local office, run for school board, run for village trustee, run for all of the offices that are available because you can be that change. We had one of the uh, local trustees in the Northwest suburbs that ran at 18. They were elected at 18. So you can run, you can run while you are still in high school or when you're getting ready to graduate and be elected to office. So don't think of that as a deterrent or if you're in college, you can run. One of uh, the people who is in the chat right now, very proud that we were able to help him to get elected, Andrew. He was in college and he was elected to the Village Board of Lombard, so you can run for office and you can be that change. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight and everyone have a good rest of the afternoon and please make sure that you hit the red button below to subscribe to our channel. The more people that we get to subscribe to the channel, the further our reach will be. Also, once we hit 100 people, we'll get a custom URL, so it will be at 6dims. Also, follow us across all of our social media platforms. They're all just at 6dims and that's 6 spelled out, dims. So S-I-X-T-H-D-E-M-S, -E and you can follow us on all of the platforms. We're on every major social media platform. Thank you all, and have a good evening.